a collaboration of the Interfaith Center of New York and the International Debate Education Association and funded by Open Society Foundations, Debate in the Neighborhood is a free program that brings together high school-aged students from diverse New York City faith communities to learn the art of debate while examining mutual concerns of social justice and civil liberties. Returning from last year's program were three youth groups in Queens, the Hindu Temple Society of North America, located in Flushing, the Jamaica Muslim Center, and the Sikh Cultural Society and Gurdwara in Richmond Hill. Students joining the program this year from the Bronx were from Youth Ministries for Peace and Justice, located in Soundview, and the Islamic Leadership School in Parkchester. In the first stage of the program, students met once a week within their own groups to learn and practice basic debate techniques. Midway through the program, all of the students came together for the first time in a two-day workshop, getting to know each other and sharing what their respective faiths teach about the issue of privacy. And there's a verse in the Quran that um, says that saving one life is saving everyone in the whole world. So if invading your privacy can save someone, then we think um, it should be, it should happen, but otherwise we don't think so. Yeah, but one of the really big um, things in Sikhism is to trust people. So there's kind of this really big idea that we trust people to do the right thing on their own. So they should be able to do what they want privately because there's just like an overwhelming idea of trusting anyone for what they're doing, which could be bad sometimes, but yeah. Okay, so legend has it that there is a form of God sitting on our shoulders. His name is Chitra Gupta. And literally, it means the one who takes photos of our every action we take in life. Wow. Yeah, the thing here is that it's like our conscience. You know, like before making any decision, you would like think about the right and wrong in it. At this point in the program, each student was teamed with others outside her or his particular group to begin working together and preparing for the final debate tournament in May, which would be on a topic relating to privacy and surveillance with new technologies. For some of these students, this meeting was their first personal interaction with people of such diverse faith traditions. A signature stage of the program took place a few weeks later when students boarded buses to travel from Queens and the Bronx to visit each other's houses of worship. As they talked with each other about their distinctive faith practices, they discovered shared values of family, neighborhood improvement, and community service. Primarily through youth, we try to better the community. For example, uh, once every month, I believe, um, one or two families get together and we go to a soup kitchen and serve food, which is either made in the temple canteen or is sponsored by people from outside, and we go serve food there. We do stuff such as fixing up parks and planting street, street trees along the sidewalks. Um, we've also fixed several parks like Concrete Plant Park and Starlight Park. We get together and we help teach little kids, like all of us are pretty much volunteers and we take our time to teach them math, English. Mon uncle teaches religion and there's like separate sections for like your age and religion group. Finally, the program culminated in a day-long debate tournament with all students engaged in formal, judged debates on the topic of the New York Police Department's stop and frisk practices. The NYPD should increase its stop and frisk rather than um, take it out because it helps keep the community safer. That's the job of the NYPD. Their job is to make this community a better place for everyone. The Stop and Frisk program is ineffective. No research has truly proven the effectiveness of New York Stop and Frisk, and a small number of arrests, summons, and guns recovered demonstrates that the practice is ineffective. If we have reason suspicion, or even probable cause, then we can stop and frisk someone. So say if that person had a gun or a knife or any type of weapon on them, then we just we just um, we just save the whole community from a tragedy. Even if there was a 20% success rate, as we mentioned through our statistics, there's been um, an, a decrease in crimes through other means, and they haven't even used stop and frisk in their uh, initiatives. So if they can do, achieve that level of decreasing crime rates then I'm pretty sure New York City can do that as well. The final prize-winning debate was judged by New York City Commissioner of Immigrant Affairs, Fatima Shama. 
former vice president of the Fund for New York City, the Reverend Dr. Alfonso Wyatt, and Reuters investigative journalist and two-time Pulitzer Prize winner, David Rode. I'm really proud of the way that both teams have progressed to get to this point. We used to be here up on the stage debating this particular topic after months of hard work. So I'm really, really proud of both teams. That being said, the judges have come to a conclusion, and uh, the winner of this debate is the negative team, so the team from Queens, congratulations. When the winners were announced, awards were also given out to outstanding individual debaters and those who had most improved over the course of the program. In the end, Debate in the Neighborhood proved to be a celebration, not just of the impressive accomplishments of these students, but of their example to all New Yorkers that diversity can help us discover the values and concerns we all share.